Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Study Call with Chief McCoy. In this episode, we will be talking about the ship's freshwater system. In the previous episode, we talked about the seawater cooling system. Out in the ocean, seawater is the most abundant resource we can use for cooling the engines and washing things like the cargo holds and other stuff. But the downside is seawater causes corrosion in metals like iron and steel, which is basically what the ship and its machinery is made of. Also, the crew can't use seawater for drinking and other domestic things like taking a shower or washing clothes, which is why ships have a freshwater system. Now, for the purpose of this discussion, we will divide the freshwater system into two subsystems, the freshwater cooling system and the domestic freshwater system. In this episode, we will only tackle the freshwater cooling system. Let's leave the domestic for the next episode. And also, the system that we will discuss today and for the succeeding episodes will be for ships running on diesel engines. Ships driven by steam turbines have a slightly different configuration, so that's going to be a topic for a future episode. Now, the freshwater cooling system is used for absorbing the heat from the main and auxiliary engines and transfer it to the seawater system and eventually dispose the heat out into the sea. Depending on the ship's design, a low temperature line can also be installed for cooling smaller machinery like the air compressors, but more on that later. Perhaps we could say that the main feature of the freshwater cooling system is the main engine jacket cooling line, otherwise known as the HT or high temperature line. The HT line is a closed loop system, so technically, there really isn't a beginning or end, but anyway, let's start from the expansion tank, which of course contains fresh water. From there, fresh water is suctioned by the jacket cooling water pumps and then delivers it to the main engine cylinders. The cylinders have these jackets around the top part, including the cylinder cover and the exhaust valves, which is basically the area around the combustion chamber where obviously the heat is generated when the engine burns fuel. Now, the fresh water flows through these jackets and absorbs the heat from the metal, maintaining the temperature at around 83 to 85 degrees Celsius. After passing through the jackets, the water leaves the main engine and goes to a junction where some of it goes back up to the expansion tank, while some of it passes through a temperature-controlled three-way valve which then redirects the water flow to either go back to the main engine or pass through the jacket water cooler where the heat absorbed from the main engine will eventually be disposed out to the sea. The HT line is also fitted with a preheater which is used to maintain the jacket water temperature when the engine is running at slow speeds like when the ship is maneuvering. A similar, although smaller, system is also installed for the auxiliary engines. Now, based on what we have just discussed, it's pretty obvious why seawater should never be used directly as the cooling medium in the engine jacket water system as it will cause serious damages to the engine parts, mainly due to corrosion. As mentioned in the previous episode, the jacket water cooler can use either seawater or fresh water as the cooling medium depending on whether the ship is installed with a direct seawater cooling system or a central cooling system. Now, earlier, I have also mentioned that a low temperature freshwater line can also be installed for cooling smaller machinery and other systems. This is the case if the ship is installed with a central cooling system, where instead of seawater passing through the various heat exchangers, this system uses freshwater. 
Similar to the HT line, this LT or low temperature line is a closed loop, has an expansion tank and gets the water circulated through the system using pumps. The fresh water passes through all of the coolers in the various auxiliary systems like lubricating oil and intake air for the main and auxiliary engines and also for machinery like the air compressors as well as for the different condensers like in the steam return line and the refrigeration and air conditioning plant. Basically everything that needs cooling down that is within the low temperature range, which is to say anything that generates heat but not directly as a result of fuel combustion. Now, after the fresh water has absorbed the heat from everything in the system, it will pass through the central cooler, which is sometimes also known as the LT or low temperature water cooler, which is directly connected to the seawater cooling system. In here, the heat will be absorbed by the seawater and eventually flow out through the overboard valve and out into the sea. What I have shown you is a typical setup of the ship's freshwater cooling system, but of course the design or arrangement may vary a little bit for every ship. There are also a few items which are connected to the freshwater system which I did not include yet, because those items will be the topics of future episodes. If you have any other maritime related topics which you are interested in or want me to discuss, feel free to write it down in the comment section below. But for now, class dismissed.